Come on, let's put this hands together. Give the Lord one more hand praise. If you love the Lord, give him one more hand praise. Celebrate what the Lord has done. And we thank God for being here uh, today. Uh, you may be seated again. Uh, we're grateful uh, to be in the house of the Lord one more time. God has truly been good to us and he has been kind and merciful to all of us. Uh, I want to first give honor to the presiding bishop and the uh, words that he has spoken to this family. And um, I thank God that he has allowed uh, me this opportunity to stand here, which I don't take it lightly. Uh, this is a special place, special privilege to be able to speak and say a few words about a man that is um, greater than what you think. I also want to give an honor to um, the diocesan bishop here, Bishop Horace Smith, and his lovely wife, and amen, for opening up the doors and being so great. Um, again, I want to uh, commend the family that is here, uh, the church family, the, the Walkers, Sister Walker, the husband, all the church members that during the declining years and probably before, um, they took care of Bishop. Uh, they treated him as an angel. And because of that, the church cannot have anything but a glorious future because of how they've done it. I think you should put your hands together for them. And also, um, I would um, call Bishop all the time. Um, and I... I didn't know who I was talking to on the phone, Sister Valerie or Vicky. I said, y'all ought not to perpetrate like that. Um, but, but all the daughters and the sons and son-in-laws uh, during the declining year, spending time uh, in a 24-hour shift, trying to make sure Bishop's life was comfortable, is remarkable. Anybody that think that's not, is because you have never had that opportunity or been in that position. I used to say some things, I just say, how can anybody that love their families put them in a nursing home? And my grandmother died at 104 years old, and my mother had cancer in her late years. And um, we started to do a 24-hour shift with two people, my wife and I. And um, I said, hey, your time. She said, no, it ain't, it's your time this time. And I said, okay, I go up and spin up and help her. And then all of a sudden she said, uh, I said, it's your time. She says, your mama. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I understood what she said. And, and obviously the worst thing I wanted to do was to put them in hospice. Uh, and I found out that I had to let her go to a nursing home because they have pride. And the pride is that they're not going to let you wash them up, clean them up, and do all of that. And I told them it's just too hard for the family to try to take on that task, even though I know that they wanted to do the best that they could. It's just too difficult. And uh, so uh, my understanding is right before they made a decision, Chief checked out. And um, that was the greatest thing in a way uh, that could have helped ease the family that is here. I said to you all, the reason why I'm here and I drove those miles is because Chief was my friend. Now, you got to know something about me. I'm a friend with people in season and out of season. Because I think any time that uh, everybody needs a friend. I used to call Chief three times a week for, I know, five, seven years. Three times a week I call him. I had kind of like a pattern. I call him on Monday, Wednesday. And then I call him on Friday. And uh, sometimes what Chief would do, Chief would uh, say the same thing over. And uh, I knew he was, but not to let him know that he was repeating it, I'd act like it's the first time I heard it. And, and, and Chief and I got along. A friend does more than just somebody that you're acquainted with. Chief used to call me sometimes. I told him any time he called one night about 10, 10.30 at night. Didn't want nothing, but he just wanted to talk. Every now and then you need to have a friend that will get up out of the bed and talk to you. And to you it may not mean nothing, but to that person it meant a lot. And uh, Chief um, 
um, we used to have our rounds, and I'm going to quickly do this. Um, I want to uh, thank again the family, but uh, Chief um, would do some things like we would have our humorous talks and some serious talks. If you got a friend that opens up to you, you cannot violate that trust by talking to everybody about what he says. It's not any of y'all business what Chief told me. But he could feel free talking and I could feel free to him and then he'll say, all right, Mary, that's enough. See, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And, and that's how he would do it. And um, I, he would just tell me, I said, what are you doing, Chief? He said, well, I'm just uh, sitting around here, but I said, you okay? He said, well, my daughters keep telling me I need to get up out of this chair and move around. And he said, I told them, have y'all ever been 97 before? And he said, if you ain't been 97, don't tell me to get up and walk. My point of it, yes. Uh, Chief, Chief had all this great desire in his heart. And what he says is, uh, he said, Merit, I just want to do better. I want to do better. As I feel like I can do better. I said, Chief, you can't do it. I said, what you can do is oversee everybody else doing it. And I said, you can um, pour in and mentor them. I didn't know he was doing that, but that's what he did. And so I said his last part about it. He said, you know what, Mary? He said, um, I met this woman, and this woman was so impressive. She started talking to me about Jesus. And he says, um, uh, I was getting ready to go out one night. He said, I come in here. I had my clothes. I had my car. He said, I had, I had a nice two-door car. He said, the saints had to have a way to church, so I sold my two-door car and got a bigger car. And he told me I couldn't uh, do invest in the market, so I got rid of my stock. He said, one day I was walking, and, and my mama told me, where are you going? You going down that old church to get baptized? And he said, you know what? I think I will. And he went down and got baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Because he said, I want to live right. And so I'm saying, all of you, um, I've had some great people to go out of my life. I, got, I tell all the young people, amen, take time, tap into some of these older people that you don't think have nothing, they don't know nothing, they pass their age. They can drop some nuggets in you that, that you never would get anywhere else. And to the utmost thing that they can do is they can keep you grounded. That you won't be around here trying to be like the modern day preachers that sound in just alike. I am telling you, Chief was, uh, was great. And, and he did a lot for me. Bishop Bowers did a lot for me. Uh, Bishop Golder, I was his armor bearer for 10 years. Uh, Bishop James A. Johnson used to spend time in my house talking and sharing the gospel with me. Um, I'm telling you, there's been so many uh, that has been a blessing to me. Now, I'm going to do this, and I just want to thank you again for listening to me. Uh, I would like to take us to a familiar passage of scripture. I'm going to hit it and quit it. Uh, it is in 1 Corinthians chapters number 15. Everybody know it, but I don't want what one verse out of this chapters number 15, and it reads like this. O death, where is thy sting? And O grave, where is thy victory? And I might as well read the next two. For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We praise you for, Lord, this warrior that you have brought about, the great example, the one that have witnessed so many things, we thank you for sparing his life, keeping him, and allowing him, O oh God, in your appointed time to uh, open up our eyes and minds to the things in which you have shared uh, through him. Bless this family. Bless this church. Don't let no one come in and tear it up or divide it. We pray that the vision will go on and the power will still be seen. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. I would like to take a thought from this. In verse 55, it says, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? And I would just like to share with a subject, and I want to talk about the celebration. Somebody said the celebration, the celebration. Amen. What I found out about uh, Chief led me to kind of go in this direction. Uh, Chief was a servant. Chief had a lot of things that was different than most people. And I think his uniqueness is what Chief made Chief who he was. 
But I found out that uh, in your Bible, there are so many people who speak of death, not with regret or disappointments or sorrow because of their faith that they had in the Lord, that faith that had developed from many years of experiences that they've had in their life, amen, is what build the confidence of what they had and how they lived, what they stood up against. Everybody that have not witnessed to this don't understand this kind of faith don't come overnight. It does not come just because you get baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But a faith like this has to be developed over the years, periods of time, that things that have happened into their life, and they knew uh, that this was provided them with the success that they incurred over the time period in which they lived. They understood that for this kind of experience to be, and this kind of faith, it comes with bruises, it comes with knocks, it comes through hurts and battles that they had to go through. This kind of faith that a person has, amen, you must know the chief had been around for 97 years. And for us to look at him and talk about him now, he didn't get that overnight. He didn't get the testimonies that you all shared with us overnight. There's a lot of things that people go through that everybody don't see, but the person that's going through it. People don't know what, what it took to get you to where you are. People can't understand how much rejections, uh, disappointments that was in life to get you where you are. Amen. People don't realize that sometimes you have to be a soloist. You have to encourage yourself because you don't have people around you that think enough of you that will keep you encouraged or spend time with you. Amen. To tell you to hold on and go on. In other words, this is a sign that you could say that this did not come overnight. This is where the testimonies are, amen, developed and built off of is those experiences, those times, those troublesome times, those crying times, those times when you're uh, waking up in the middle of the night trying to get something for the next day, those times that you have to deal with hard-headed folks and mean, evil people that's in the church realm, and yet he has to find some kind of way to love them and get them to the place where they want to be saved. In other words, this is what we have to say, that these are the things that he built off of. Therefore, they learned something, appreciation about death. They appreciated it and they approached it in a different manner. They didn't approach death with, a, with nothing but joy, joy. They approached it and didn't mind uh, coming to it. It's because of some faith that they had in God. Therefore, they wasn't afraid like most people are today. They have no thoughts of any type of losses that they would have when death comes. They didn't worry about the danger of missing out of anything that they had to leave behind. Is because of their faith that they had in the Lord. In other words, in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 says, Paul said, we don't sorrow. Amen. It's other sorrow that has no hope. Amen. We don't go through those battles. We don't cry as other people that don't recognize that there is a hope that stands strong, a lively hope. Amen. That does not have limitations and barriers. And so with all of these uncertainties and fears of death, there still seemed to be an underlying joy that every believer is looking forward to. That's why you have to watch people that says, I feel sorry for y'all because y'all can't do nothing. I feel sorry for y'all. Hey, Amen. Because you can't enjoy life. Well, what they don't know is what you know. They don't understand that there is no comparison. Amen. To this light. Amen. To what God has already provided for every child of God. In other words, he said, you got to have joy. People have to realize joy is not always an emotional lift. Joy don't mean that you're running down the aisle, jumping benches and shouting. But I heard James says, amen, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that's what gives you joy and knowing that whatever I'm in, God's going to bring me out of it. Whatever I'm facing, God is going to deliver me from it. The joy is that I'm not in it all by myself. 
because God stands strong with us. Amen. And so because of this, you must understand uh, that uh, their faith, amen, has been shapen by the perception, amen, uh, of the future that God has provided. I have faith because I have, I know that what I've been through will prepare me for what is to come. I recognize that, amen, that faith that I had become the foundation, amen, allow me to withstand, go through anything that is there because it has shaped my life, amen, it shaped my future without faith. I could never make it. Without the faith in the Lord, I would never be able to survive. Without faith, I would have given up a long time. The Bible said if we have hope in this life only, we be men most miserable or disappointed. In other words, when they saw death, they saw it from a theological perspective as an expectation of something coming. Amen. As the good that is going to come out of it and not something bad. I'm going to say that again. Death is being seen as a theological perspective, uh, as an expectation of something good that is going to come. Who in here, amen, don't want to see something good coming out of everything? Who in here would give up, amen, a life unless they know that there is something good coming out of it? Who in here would be in the church, amen, as much as you say, I like being saved. The reason why you're being saved is because you know something good is coming out of it. The reason why you're taking so much, going through so much, is because you know that there is something good coming out of it. I don't mind, amen, things happening as long as I know something is good is coming out of it. In other words, we are seeing things uh, differently that then the world sees it. The world sees death as the end of life. The believer sees it as the beginning of life. You don't even live until after you die. You'll never be blessed until after you have died. In other words, a theological perspective starts first with the beginning of knowing that Jesus is real. Amen. I don't care what anybody said, this Jesus is real. I don't care if you've never seen him with your eyes or touched him with your hands, Jesus is real. Amen. Somebody said, I know he's real because I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. I don't care what you said, just nobody would have gotten out of what they were in unless you know Jesus is real. Amen. I don't care what anybody said. I don't care what they try to put in your mind. You have to understand that Jesus is real. It starts right there. He that believe it, amen, in him, he says, shall not perish but have everlasting life. Just three more minutes here. In other words, God's word is real. It contains all the blessings of the Lord. In other words, that theological perspective focus on three things. One is on the thoughts of God, amen, that makes a difference in your life. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. They're not thoughts of evil, but to an expected end. I don't care what anybody might think about what I'm going through, how I'm facing. I don't want nobody to think because things bad happen that God does not care about you. I don't want anybody to look at it and say that the Lord, hey man, actually don't understand where I am. The Lord said, I don't need nobody to interpret my thoughts. I know what I am. The thoughts that I think is something that you don't understand. They are for your expected end. Lean over and tell somebody, God got a future for you. And your future has nothing to do basically with the natural, but your future has to be an extension of life that God has already prepared for everyone that is here. Can somebody shout glory? Secondly, the theological perspective they focus on the way of things that God is doing. Sometimes we get upset because we don't know what God is doing. We try to match our thoughts with God's thoughts, but our thoughts is not like God's thoughts. And because of that, we misunderstand God. And sometimes when God is doing some things to fix us, we criticize. And sometimes God got to take some things, amen, away from us. Amen. We criticize what he's doing. God told me to tell you he doesn't make no mistake and everybody come in here has a purpose behind it amen and if you don't know what he's doing that's why God said just trust me amen if you don't know what I'm doing just trust me if you can't figure it out 
He said, trust me. If you don't have nobody go to you to enlighten you, just trust me. What I found out about trust and faith is you don't need an explanation. You don't need nobody to explain to you why, amen, things are going on. Just trust God. Amen. He got something he wants to do in your life. Can somebody out here shout glory? In other words, there's a lot of people have missed God because they're trying to put God over here when God is over there. Some folks have missed God simply because they think they can figure him out what God will and will not do. God can do anything he wants to do. And anytime he wants to do it and still be God, he can bless you anytime you want to be blessed and still be God. In other words, what he says in here, thirdly in here, amen, that perspective is things that God has promised you. Whatever you're doing, don't forget what God promised you. I don't care what it is, it may not seem like it's going to come, but don't you forget what God has promised you. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Don't let nobody make you walk out from it. Just remember whatever God promised you shall come just like he said. In other words, his word cannot return back void. It may not look like it, but God got a calculated time period and said after that you have suffered a while, he will establish you, settle you, and make you perfect. Can't somebody shout glory? In other words, that don't register with our natural mind. That don't figure in our equation because whatever God does is opposite of what we think. But you got to know God knows how because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Somebody ought to give him a praise right there. In other words, this is what made Paul speaks like he did because I read this scripture so many times at funerals and I didn't understand it until more you dig into his word. I found out that sometimes we are underestimating God's ability. Sometimes we read and we don't tap into the revelation of what he says. Sometimes we think we see it one way when God is saying it another. That's why the Bible said, let him that have ears hear what the spirit says unto the church. In other words, Paul writes from this uh, perspective in uh, chapters number 15. Amen. He's trying to encourage people and bring comfort. Amen. To those that was in doubt that there was a resurrection. I want you to know that there's some people in the church act like there is no resurrection. They cry like it ain't going to be no return. They act like things are not going to reverse the process. But I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the resurrection came somebody shout glory in other words they were doubting because there was an enemy in place there was something that nobody had ever had to deal with before amen it was something standing in the way amen of increasing their faith amen look like they faith would stop when you talk about death look like their hope would end at the grave look like things were not going to get any better when you see the dirt getting on the ground but what he stayed in him is he said don't lose your focus amen don't lose your focus but if Jesus died and got up from the grave that's where your hope is if Jesus had not died then we'd be in a bad shape today if Jesus had not gotten up out of the grave then we would be men the most miserable I don't know how you feel but every now and then I have to thank the Lord for what he has already done I have to praise him for what he has done on the inside of us can somebody shout glory in other words what he said you got to focus on when he got up because when he got up out of the grave he sealed our faith he sighed he provided for us some better things y'all don't understand it but your whole faith is filled sealed it's sealed that means it can't be changed whatever the promise is cannot be altered when Jesus got up out of the grave then he sets a precedence for everybody that believe that though you were dead yet shall you live again in other words Paul then was bringing it out in the text what he was saying
understand death is not something that we should fear because death provides a deliverance for everybody that is in this body that we're in. Can I talk to somebody in here? I don't care what it is. I don't care if they're healthy or not. Amen. They're born and got into a crucial body that the Bible said the man born of a woman but a few days. Amen. And full of trouble. Every day you got to ask God for some kind of a deliverance I don't care what it is there gotta be some deliverance and this old body come back but what he says is that death provides us with a deliverance amen a transition and an inheritance and so what Paul focused about in here when he writes this particular text in here he said well I want y'all to get the truth of the matter I want y'all to understand that you don't have to look at it like you're looking at it because it's focused in on something in terms of a celebration this passage of scripture I couldn't hardly see it but it says it is a celebration everybody got to know that when there is a celebration it's always mindful of some great thing that you've been through or something that you come out of it or something that you've achieved with all of your struggles you just can't let it go by without giving God some praise without raising your emotion level and your faith level when you talk about celebration it's not a bad time that's not a bad song that's not a bad spirit but amen it's something of joy it's something that is good about having a celebration in other words it kicks out amen negative it kicks out amen any kind of hurts and pains and all you focus in on is the celebration Celebration. In other words, Paul describes this thing as a moment at Christ's coming when all the believers are going to celebrate his return. In other words, they waited. Some didn't mind waiting because they were looking for the celebration. Amen. They didn't mind. Amen. Hanging around because they were looking for the celebration. They didn't give up. They didn't quit. They didn't walk away because there was an expectation that there's going to be a celebration that is here in other words it's going to be the greatest transformation that ever happened in your life it is moments when the glory of God shall be revealed the Bible said is when you're going to celebration in other words the glory of God being revealed that means that what God is going to do he's going to answer your questions he's going to satisfy your mind he's going to bring some peace to your confusion in life because when the glory of God shall be revealed all the time that you've been looking negative God says I'm getting ready to show you what I've been doing all the time that you thought I was not there in other words nobody knows amen because the glory of God does not come in until after you've been through the process the glory of God never comes in until you look back over your life and say down through the years God have been good to me all of my life God have been good to me in other words he said the reason why I let you go through that is because I had something better for you reason why I let you lose your job because I had a greater job for you reason why I separated you from some folk because they're not supposed to remain in your life they only step to get you to where God wants you to be in other words he said I know y'all don't understand it but he said the reason why when the glory come in amen somebody gonna start speaking joy unspeakable and full of glory every time you get there when death comes in when God brings you through you're gonna raise your hand and give God the highest praise in other words you gotta realize that what God is said it'll transform you both amen in the death and in the life when God makes his promise to you and so in the text I got three more minutes he sees things on a different side Paul sees things on a different side when he said oh grave where is your victory oh death where is your sting he's not just making a statement he's not just talking
talking over the top of his head but Paul had a chance to look back and he started taunting the devil can y'all taunting the death taunting the grave y'all gotta realize when he gets to that point Paul is in an upper mindset his faith is at the place where he knows everything is all right taunting means to make mockery of somebody he looks at the devil he looks at death he looks at the grave and he start making fun of it amen he starts saying all of you that claim that you have power and you have victory over God's people he said oh grave where is your victory oh death where is your sting in other words this crime this taunting that God was allowing Paul to do is just like Yom would do when the devil thought he had you when he thought he was getting ready to take you down and all of a sudden you rise back up again you lick out your tongue right back at the devil and say nah 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 you didn't get me this time because I survived it I went through it I came out of it and God gave me this testimony that I'm saved to the hood okay somebody shout glory here in other words Paul said can I get two more minutes here Paul says I'm taunting it's, a, it's nothing but a battle cry when y'all look back and said, oh grave, where is your victory? It's a battle cry after they have tried, the enemy have tried to defeat somebody. It's a battle cry. Amen. When the grave couldn't hold your body down, it's a battle cry. They said, after you did all that you've done and the resume that you had, you've been victorious all down generation from the fall of Adam. You've held people in a grave. You help them in a place where they could not return back to the life but Paul said who shall deliver me from this body of sin and death Paul said I thank God amen that he giveth us the victory in other words what he's saying in here is, is a celebration time it's a time that we ought not to feel sad about where Bishop Davis is it's a time where we not ought to feel sad about God taking him to a better place because the body Bible said the Bible said that the angel rejoice amen and, and the saints coming home is there anybody want to join in on the celebration I heard Paul said the devil amen what Jesus did when he got up out of the grave I heard him say he dismantled death amen he disarmed death and he said oh grave where is your victory in other words he said you've been called to kill a a lot of folk but I heard him say when Jesus got up somebody said that's where my hope lies that's where I've been holding my shout for when Jesus got up I heard the Lord said death is swallowed up in victory can somebody shout glory in here can somebody open your mouth and say you know what it did amen when he came to the grave before Bishop before Bishop came death was made become a transitioning amen mortal shout put on immortality whatever you did amen and mixing up the body whatever you did the cause the delay and decay coming in whatever he did the cause the destruction God said I'm gonna I'm gonna make this mortal put on immortality I'm gonna take off the corruption and put on the incorruption and that's why we celebrate can somebody say it's a celebration because Paul said for me to live is Christ but when I die is great gain he said I fought a good fight I kept the faith amen I finished my course and I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready for the crown that is waiting on me somebody said celebration I heard I heard what Job said in spite of my trials he said I know that thou will bring me amen to death amen to the house that is appointed for all living but he said all my appointed time he said I'm gonna wait until my change come I wish they had somebody out there can say absent of the body present with God now look at somebody right around you and said is there anybody amen would have come back and want to be back here after God took him out of here I heard her Hosea says amen he's gonna wipe away all your tears he gonna he gonna heal your body and never be sick again that's worth celebrating that I went all the way through can I get a praise or anything?
back here. Look at somebody say for 97 years, he had to battle for 97 years. He had to fight. He fought a good fight. Looked like the devil was taking him down. But God, who is rich in mercy, brought him back up again, revived him, and put the fight back inside of him. I got a feeling there's a celebration that Bishop David did not quit. Bishop David did not give up. It's a celebration time that whatever the devil was trying to do, it did not work. Somebody shout, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't alter God's divine plan because I got a feeling that the celebration starts here, but it's going to continue up there. I got a feeling when you get into the heavenly realm, I believe you're going to be shouting glory. You'll be shouting hallelujah. You're going to even give the devil some praise. Somebody said, what? What is that? Because you can look back and say, if you hadn't messed with me, I never would have discovered that Jesus was a deliverer, Jesus was a healer. If you never put this on me, I never knew God could deliver me from it. So somebody raise your voice and said, this is a celebration. Heaven is shouting, angels are rejoicing. Everybody love the Lord, say, get ready. Join in on the celebration. Let's say he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. He's our God, our savior. He's our deliverer. He's our present help in times of trouble. He's a bridge over troubled water. They said they love the name Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. I got it all in Jesus. It is man that me in Christ is a new creature. Open your mouth and give the Lord the highest praise. He knows when to put you in, but he knows how to take you out of it. Somebody give the Lord the highest praise and say, celebrate. Give him the praise that is due to him. Celebrate. Hey, hey, hey. He's not dead. He's yet alive. Can somebody shout glory one more time? Can you shout glory one more time? I got one more thing to say. I was looking at the death of Lazarus and the Bible said they asked him, where have you laid him? Jesus said, well, I'm going to give you some stuff here. I'm going to give you a perspective like never been before. He said, Lazarus is not dead. He said, Lazarus is asleep. Well, the people couldn't see what the Lord was saying. And he had to say, take me, amen, where you laid you. In other words, the text goes on to say, amen, they came to the grave and they came celebrating. They were celebrating, y'all. They were looking at it. said, Lazarus in whom your love is dead amen but they were celebrating and what God told me to tell you out of that is that some of y'all are coming here to celebrate the dead when you should come in here and celebrate the living he's not dead he's alive open your mouth and said I come to celebrate the living he's alive that's not him that he's alive give the Lord the highest praise and said Celebrate! I wish I had time to break it down. Celebrate! You may not understand it. Oh, Lord. But every one of us are have to be looking for that day. I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking for that day. Oh, Lord. When it's all over, come on, somebody. Said, I'm looking for that day. Amen. When I meet the Lord in glory. And I'll be praising him all the day long. Bishop Bishop Davis was an awesome uh, person. They tell me sometimes you cannot hardly see the value in stuff. Amen. But they said golds are found, amen, sometimes in cave. Diamonds found in the ground. Amen. Pearls is sometimes in the belly of an ostrich. But you know what? It does not devalue where they are. They still are who they are. So if he's in his body that look like it ain't got much going on, the value is on the inside. What Jesus did at his baptism, if y'all ain't got baptized in Jesus' name, y'all better run. This is a normal occasion. Death is all in the land. The only thing that's going to save you is that you got to get in protective custody in the hands of God. 
If you ain't in no protective cover, that devil will come in. He'll do whatever he wants to do. But when I'm in Christ Jesus, nothing can pluck us out of his hand. Can I get a praise right there? Said if I'm in here, I'm going to stay in here because God is a good God. May God bless all of you. Amen. All of you supporters, all you worshipers, keep on worshiping. Keep on praising. Keep on magnifying the Lord. And if you couldn't say a word, you ought to wave your hand. If you couldn't shout, then hold on to the pew and say, I've learned how to lean on you. I've learned how to trust you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Celebrate with your mask on. Celebrate. Give the Lord glory. Celebrate. Hallelujah. What a mighty word. Woo. Feel like the Holy Ghost in here.